So I've been kind of waiting to show people uh, what a distended cloaca is because if you are not familiar with this and you have a pet snake and it's your first time seeing this, it can be horrific. I remember the first time it happened to me was a pine snake and I literally brought it to Tufts University and I was crying. <laughs> I love my northern pine snake so much and I had never seen it and I had a lot of snakes and it was very upsetting because the doctor gave me this very horrific sounding um, opinion and that it's probably likely going to die and they went and did all the stuff and they sutured it and it cost I remember like $750 and snake eventually died. How old are you? I'm curious. This is interesting. I don't cry. Period. I, I, that's not but, the interesting part. Like, how old were you when you brought it to Tufts University? I don't know. Probably 21. Oh, okay. Do you think they'd like now laugh at people if they brought their snakes there, or is it? I don't know, but it was it was like a snake that I had for so long, and the guy's basically telling me, "Well, we can euthanize it." Now looking back at it, <laughs> I'm like, I could it, you know, I can handle this. And I also wanted to show you, maybe we can revisit the lesser platinum that I had done a surgery on a little while ago. She's heading towards ovulation. And I just wanted to show you guys uh, what has actually happened with those uh, abscesses that I had, I had treated. So this is my girl that actually had those couple rodent bites. Hey, sweetie. She's a little head shy and I can't blame her. But she's, uh, she's doing wonderful. Let me see. And she's doing well. She's uh, eating. She, um, she does have follicles. It really wasn't my plan to continue to, uh, you know, or even to breed her. But I started noticing and palpating her follicles and they were, were growing. So I actually have introduced her to a male or two. But she's, she's awesome. The cloaca, the muscle that cinches everything that holds, you know, its rectum, its butt inside, uh, weakens and allows that to distend beyond the, the haven of the animal's body. Once that happens, this is now subjected to damage, uh, also invading pathogens, bacteria, fungus, scratches, drying out. So one of the big problems when the flesh that's supposed to be inside comes out, it dries out and is now uh, becomes necrotic and part of it dies because it's designed to be in a moist environment and clearly being outside on substrate is not. So I'm gonna show you a couple things. Some of the first things we must do. Uh, you need to react. You need to, when you see this problem, and this can also happen in lizards, you need to do some of the first things which actually will uh, help the animal long-term if there's a chance of recovery and uh, just making the best of the situation, there's some things we need to do. First thing, take your animal, put it into a water bath. The water is only gonna be uh, up about the first quarter of the animal's body. If I put it too deep, the animals start becoming flighty, might panic, and we're gonna add stress. Right now, we want to reduce stress, and one of the first things we're doing is we're trying to get that skin into the water so it doesn't dry up. As the second step, I'm using an antibacterial, antifungal, and this is Novasan. And I put this into the water solution and I use this dilute. And all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to knock back ambient or coliform bacteria and put this animal in a position where I can start keeping the cloaca moist, but now I need to start dealing with uh, what's going on. So look at, okay, here's the perfect example. The butt of the animal is still here. This is as just like when we showed you an egg-bound snake, the butt is here. And this has now been all pushed out for reasons we can, uh, we can only guess. You'll get it when an animal is dehydrated. An animal has a very large meal in it, and it's maybe dehydrated during that. And as it's digesting it, there's not enough moisture to help move it down the GI tract, and then it starts binding, and then it starts drying out and all the material. Uh, 
It could also be sometimes wild ca caught animals, could be a uh, parasite related. In this case, this is a total captive born ball python. Uh, and it just, it just happens. I've seen it in, you know, babies. Uh, it, it's really, sometimes they're just the, the, the muscle that cinches this just weakens and, or they're pushing so hard. Maybe they ate a big meal or something like that. I, I think you guys can all use your imagination. We have a couple problems here. First problem is all of this skin right here is necrotic. It's so the very, I mean, I'm just talking about just the surface. Okay. So that skin has died and ultimately I want this back inside the animal. So the first thing I did, I soaked the animal. I made sure the animal is hydrated. Let me show you guys a trick. Want to know how to tell if a snake is hydrated? What you do, I pinch and I let go. See how that quickly went back? That shows that there's enough fluid in this animal's body that it quickly goes back to the way it was. If I pinch it and it stays like that, right off the bat, I know the animal's dehydrated and there's ways to address that. Put the animal in water and it's drinking, it's going to uh, hydrate slower. If it's really in dire straits, I can then use uh, subcutaneous uh, fluids. I'd use probably lactated ringers, you know, sterile water, and I would inject it into the muscle in multiple different spots. And that basically puts it intramuscular where then the body and the blood pull it in there and that helps hydrate the animal. You can also take um, a big, you know, 60 cc syringe with a catheter and you put it up this guy's butt and blast it with a bunch of uh, sterile water. And that also allows this animal to take that in. I'd actually probably use uh, uh, lactated ringers. A little bit of sodium chloride in there is, is quite good. But this animal wasn't dehydrated. So the next thing I did after soaking, making sure it was hydrated, I put it on antibiotics. Put it on systemic antibiotics. And once again, my go-to right now happens to be genomycin. And genomycin, like I said, when we were talking about Bubba, is an aminoglide, which means it attacks the kidneys, the renal system. So administering aminoglides when the animal is in a state of duress and it's dehydrated can actually be uh, counterproductive. It actually can be damaging because as an animal ages, it slowly loses the ability of its kidneys to do what they're supposed to do. So an older animal does not have the young kidneys of let's say a yearling snake or, or whatnot. So want to make sure it's hydrated. You never administer aminoglides to an animal that's in a dehydrated state and you need to first deal with that first. So then sometimes we would pick out maybe a different kind of antibiotic, uh, something like Fortaz, a cephalosporin, which is really good at tissue injury, maybe over enrofloxin, which is Batril, which is often a go-to. So this animal has uh, amicacin coursing through its veins as of yesterday. So I treated this. The first dose, which is called the loading dose, is five milligram per kilogram, and it's given every 72 hours into the muscle, so this is the spine, the dorsal area, I put it into the muscle at a 45 degree angle forward, and I want it towards the head because the kidneys are back here, that's the blood filter, that's gonna wanna pull the aminoglide out. So I need to get this systemically, which means throughout that animal, bloodborne. Okay, so let, let's now address the tissue injury. We're going to use, I think, how about we just use this? I'm gonna use a Ovo iodine swab to I'm gonna look look around it I'm not seeing a lot of uh, what I can understand as too much pain or discomfort so I am noticing something right here so that is not its rectum so this is now that's full of material so I think, yeah, there we go. So that's, that's essentially pus. So that means that things are starting to go necrotic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some uh, sterile uh, fluid through there. And what I'll do, I'll take, I have some, these are always great, having lactated ringers, sterile water type things. Uh, lactated ringers will have all what we need so I can uh, essentially put some uh, fluid in there and help draw that material out. And what we want to do is we want to debride as much, which is to remove as much dead 
tissue, which is basically going to provide a great culture medium for things like bacteria. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this, this syringe, we're sterile, and we're going to, we're going to see some nasty stuff, I assure you, which is just, I'm going to put it in this hole. Oh yeah. Oh God. Oh yeah. So, all right. So this, See that material coming out? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So we ah, this is this is horrible. Boy, Kevin, I tell you. Damn it, Kevin. Yeah. Is it, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're getting off my shirt. Oh, I'm sorry. Everything's squirming. Like Dude, that. I can't. Yeah, I can't. Okay. <laughs> so right off the bat, we have. You can really whoo so when i talk about things anaerobic bacteria anaerobic bacteria is really gnarly and a lot of times we're going to see down in the lower part of the gi and stuff like that so that's bacteria that lives in an oxygen deprived environment and that can be hideous and it can cause horrible horrible infections and uh, so it really smells so that's, that's one thing we're probably, you know, it's probably a lot of that going on. And uh, as terrible as this looks, guys, there are methods to finding a solution. And we are just going to flush, flush, flush it away. So I might want to add, this is not a procedure that can be righted immediately. So once I clean this up in there and I put it on antibiotics, this is going to, hopefully if everything goes right, as I soak this for days, this is going to start to slough off. So that means the dead layer will leave and then underneath it will be healthier tissue. And uh, if I were to take that and put that back inside the animal, that could be horrific. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, we're going to irrigate. So we're gonna still, we're gonna try to get out a bit more of what's in there. So you can never irrigate enough. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at that. Oh, it's going back in. It's already, all right. But I am, ah, uh, ah. Uh, you think that was gonna happen? Well, <laughs> I didn't get to, I didn't get to work on it. Come back, okay. But I, I would not just go. Oh, it's back in and all set. What I'm gonna still do is I'm gonna manage uh, antibiotics, but I still wanna, I wanna kind of work on this. So. So I was not expecting, I went and changed out my water, folks. And uh, when I came back, they had gone back inside. So we're just, we're going to worry about that uh, layer of tissue, which belongs inside. That's going to slough off. So what I'm going to do with her is I'm going to keep her in the water for days. And I will often um, change the water periodically. There we go. Okay, so see right here? Now I have what's in her GI tract, okay? So I want that out. That's gonna be no good. So we wanna, ew, there we go. So this is, this is the culprit. Okay, so this is now coming out her rectum and then you have the other material. So, yep, that's it, that's, there's really not much, okay. This, see right here? This is gonna slough off. That looks, I mean, it doesn't look great, but it's, I can't cut that off, okay? That's not something I'm prepared to do. I'm just getting that little bit of urea that just came out. You really wanna make sure you get as much material out. So we have this uh, material that 
was in there. We've got it out. We've um, debrided as much as we probably can, largely. But you want to get any little, any bit. So what I've noticed is if I keep managing this like this, this will just slough off. So it will shed off. It will actually fall off. But the the part of you know the the bowel isn't uh it's not per, you know i'm not cutting it i'm not doing anything it's healing so i need to manage the husbandry once again of this animal having proper temperatures having proper uh environments uh making sure that this animal's okay reducing stress if you actually watch the way the animal's behaving this is actually uh really good i'm not seeing uh like a lot of pain and discomfort. I don't really, you know, know exactly to what level this is bothering the animal. It's bothering me because I know if it's not treated, uh, ultimately it can be life-threatening. And this will really kill animals because it sets them up for a really horrible infection. If you perforate the bowel of an animal and that uh, those uh, microbes and bacteria that are normally part of the lower GI tract get into the body cavity, you can bring around pretty quick death and this animal will just drop dead. So we want to be really careful about that. Do you know that when you breed snakes, the male's hemipenes, which they avert, you know, avert a hemipene in there and it has these little spines, which actually allows it to kind of lock inside the female. And if you were to disturb your snakes or not even disturb them, they just, you know, something uh, freaked them out. The male can try to pull out and as he's pulling out, his, the spines on his hemipenes can actually tear that cloaca, and it can perforate the cloaca into the body cavity, and that also can kill these animals. I'm looking at the gums. Right. See the gums are like light pink, not a lot of uh, dilated blood vessels, so you don't see a lot of uh, hemorrhaging, or I don't really see any. And what I'm looking at is a light pink gum, which a lot of times can tell me, hey, is there an ongoing infection? I wanna see what's going on. That actually looks like a healthy gum. If they're really uh, the blood vessels were all dilated, if they're really pink, if there was petechia, which is a little breaking of the blood vessels, uh, that would tell me that maybe there's a lot more going on. This animal does not seem to be uh, struggling right now. In fact, it would probably eat. Not that I would do that, because right now it's on antibiotics, and we're going to continue the bath solutions. We're going to revisit this and show you what, what happens with this animal. Uh, if and when... I feel like the, the dead tissue has sloughed off and I have nice, healthy tissue. I will try to clean it up. And in some cases, I might put a stitch in it. And the stitch is basically going to do, it's just going to, uh, it's going to account for the muscle that actually holds everything in there. So if I stitch it, it allows that muscle a chance to actually regain its strength and business as usual after that. Uh, sometimes I'll actually just take uh, some tape, electrical tape and some uh, gauze and I'll wrap that up and put it there and you're just basically keeping everything in there. So we're going to see, but it's, it's per animal situations depending on what's going on. But like I said, I actually have been waiting for a while to show you guys what actually happens with the distended cloaca, but you never want to put the necrotic tissue back into the animal you, by you pushing it in there. In some cases, uh, the skin or the part of the intestine or the bowel becomes so inflamed it really swells and it physically cannot go back inside there. And you must manage all the material. You must make sure the skin that is dead is not being included to go back inside there. In this case, it actually just went back in on its own. I didn't try to do that, but I'm still visiting this. It is through antibiotics. It's in a water solution. Everyone, thank you very much for your attention to this and hopefully you're learning something and I can show the, the years of finding all sorts of problems in my pets and my reptiles and trying to figure out ways to manage them. Uh, you know, originally I used to, you know, work with vets and stuff like that. It seems like it's a, a very different climate nowadays and stuff, certainly for the level where I'm at and my needs. So I've had to learn a lot myself and I'm always learning. Remember that always learning. So, but there are certain things that I, I can do that, uh, I've done many, many times. I've improved my techniques and the results are the animals heal. And, and do fine after. So I'm trying to like share some of the stuff instead of hiding actually what could actually happen in a large reptile collection, we're actually showing you. So thanks a lot guys and don't forget to comment.
didn't turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on! <laughs>